Hello everyone, I'm Matt from Matt's Bookshelf, and today I don't have a book to review, so instead I'm going to go into my reading habits, what I like to read, and the order and process in which I read them. I've enjoyed reading as a hobby since my freshman year of high school, so in a way I guess I'm an experienced reader. My style isn't particularly complex, so to give you an example of how I like to read, I'm just going to go through what books I'm reading right now and the order in which I'm reading them. So right now, I am reading James Clavell's Noble House. I'm almost done with it, but it is 1300 pages long. I've been reading it for about a month now, and I don't really force myself to read a lot in one sitting. Typically, it, the most I'll read is probably like 50 pages or so. Um, there's an Ernest Hemingway quote about writing where he says that he only likes to write a certain amount of words a day so that the freshness of writing doesn't go away. So instead of forcing yourself to write and risking the prose not being as good as you want it to be, you take a break, you stop for the day, and then you look at it again freshly. And the same kind of applies with me to reading. I don't like to force myself to read a large amount of pages a day just for the sake of reading a lot. I think when you read too much, you get to the point where you start skimming over pages and you're not really enjoying the prose or the story as much as you could. There are a lot of instances where if I'm reading for a long period of time where I kind of start to brush over the pages and then I look back and say, I don't remember anything that I just read. And then you have to go back and read those pages again and it makes the process more time consuming and more laborious. So that's why I like to read a smaller amount of pages a day because it stays fresh in my mind and the enjoyment doesn't go away. When I read fiction, I also like to keep the characters' lives in my life for longer periods of time, which is kind of weird, but let me explain. So with Noble House, obviously it's a big book, tons of different characters. But the thing is, I like the characters and I like having daily checkups on what they're doing. The faster you read it, the faster the characters are out of your lives. And um, I think there's a lot to enjoy out of reading it slower. And you sort of get to be more familiar with the characters and say, oh, what is, I don't know, Ian Dunros is the main character of Noble House doing today. And it's things like that that I think sort of help me connect with the characters more and the setting more is taking my time with it. But obviously Noble House is a big book. It's, again, it's 1300 pages. So I didn't commit myself to reading it all at once. Usually when I read fiction or nonfiction, if it's a, it's a decent sized book, I like to read two books at once. And that's kind of what I did here. During the course of which I've read Noble House, I've also read and finished Julius Caesar's Civil War Commentary, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. And I think that taking a break from larger books to read smaller books can be helpful because you get less tired with the bigger book and it, start, and it doesn't feel as much like a struggle to read because you're always going to be longing to read different books. I think it's just part of human nature that you, when you have a book that you're reading, you tend to, you enjoy the book that you're reading, but you're also looking at your other books you have to read and you're sort of imagining yourself reading them and it gets, you know, it can get frustrating because you want to get to the next thing, but you also have the book in front of you, you want to read and you want to enjoy, you want to, you know, um, see through to the end but there's always those lingering other books so i think that if i hadn't read those three other books caesar civil war commentaries great gatsby and some surprises i'd be reading noble house and thinking back my mind man i wonder how good those other books are so i think that taking breaks between larger works can be very helpful in that regard so typically i'll read two books at once usually one bigger book and one smaller book or maybe two medium-sized books at the same time just to keep the reading fresh I also, thanks to my friend Dronzo, because he did a video like this, exactly like this, I'm ripping him off, but he in his video said that he likes to read short stories before he goes to bed. Short stories are plays, I think is what he said. So I watched the video and I was like, hey, I should try that because I'm a bold, daring person who wants to try new things, like different reading styles that are cool. Um, so I started reading Guy de Montpessant's short story collection, um, which I got at a thrift book store. Again, going back to the idea of having other books you want to read while you're reading the book that you are reading, I think that I read like a short story every night and now I'm like almost a third of the way through the book without even really realizing it. So, and then pretty soon I'll be done with the book and I can move on to other books as well. So finding a schedule that allows you to micromanage several books at once allows you to finish a larger variety of books in a shorter period of time while also enjoying the freshness of each individual book without it feeling tiresome and forcing yourself to read it. And honestly, I enjoy reading Guy de Maupassant's um, short story collection because they're sort of, at least the ones I've read so far, are relatively lighthearted and only about 10 pages. So it's a good, easy thing to read before I go to bed. And I find that it helps me fall asleep faster after I'm done reading because it's very calming in that regard. I would say prior to making this channel, I never really bothered with highlighting or annotating my books. 
I still don't really annotate, but when I read, I like to, as you can see here with the flaps, I put little sticky note. I tear up the sticky part of the sticky notes and I put them into the pages. I like to highlight excerpts I like from books. I just like to do little um, pencil drawings because I don't want to mark them up too bad, but it helps me find the lines because I always read books and I always find lines that I like. And, um, and as a writer, I'm always looking for different prose that I find to be interesting or influential or inspiring or just dynamic in any way. And I find them and I like them, but then I can never remember where they are. Or if I want to find inspiration from those lines, you know, obviously it's difficult to find a very specific line in a book that inspires you after you've read it and you haven't highlighted it. But now that I've been doing that, I find, I find that process to be much more helpful. Um, both in my reading and in my writing because it encourages me to find lines that I think stick out or find lines that I find um, affect me in certain ways. So it's you know added another interest in reading to me. It's another layer of reading apart from just enjoying the stories, looking for specific lines that just feel unique. And I really enjoyed that. I haven't gotten into actually annotating. I don't really know much about annotating, but I'm kind of weird with that stuff. Like, I don't want to mark up my book too much, but if you have any suggestions or recommendations as to annotating, I'd be interested in hearing. I like highlighting. I think that I'm pretty good as of right now as to remembering why I highlight certain phrases and stuff. Um, but I would be interested in learning how to annotate, especially if I could find a way to do it without, you know, marking up my book. So if you have any recommendations for that, I'd be interested in hearing what you have to say in the comments because it could be something fun to do. You know, I'm open-minded to it as well. So in conclusion to this relatively short video, um, the last thing I want to talk about with my reading habits is that I take a very specific interest in the prose itself and the um, progression of dialogue and the progression of sentences. As I said earlier, someone who is an aspiring writer, I'm very interested in how paragraphs transition, how sentences transition, how you transition from a dialogue scene to a description or transition from description to description. That stuff fascinates me and I've always been obsessed with that since about high school time. Um, so that's something I look for a lot. I kind of feel like this is like a very generalization that has no um, <laughs> that has no research background to it. I think that a lot of people solely focus on stories and plot and getting to the plot as fast and understanding the plot as fast as possible. And I think that's kind of sad in a way because and I think the prose and just how like one sentence can affect your emotions as you read it is very important to me. And I think that's kind of a misunderstood value in writing. And that goes beyond like just like finding imagery, what it means. I'm talking solely just how a description makes you feel or how a line makes you feel or a dialogue makes you feel. I'm not talking about understanding the imagery the author is putting in. I'm just specifically talking about your immediate reaction to the prose itself. That other stuff is interesting too. Obviously, I pay attention to imagery and themes and things like that. But specifically, I just love the progression of prose so much. And it's like an obsession of mine. And it's something I always look for. So yeah, that's my video. Let me know what you think in the comments below about my reading habits. They're not particularly interesting, but I want to throw them out there because I haven't made a video in a while and I don't have a book to read, to read and I don't have a book to review right now. So hope you enjoyed it at least. I have some other ideas. I'm almost done with Noble House, as I said, so there'll be a review for that coming very shortly. I want to do more writing videos as well. I have some ideas as to what I want to do there. Um, and I have a special series announcement coming out soon. So be on the lookout for that as well. Very special. I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with Ulysses. So, you know, post your guesses in the comments below as to what book I'm going to do a read along for. So thank you for getting this far. If you have gotten this far, um, again, let me know what your reading habits are in the comments below. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.